Love me tender. Okay, so it's June, July of 2024. And I have been asked on my first ever date. Why is there a hair on me from? Um, <laughs> been asked on my first ever date by this girl that I'd known for a decent amount of time. And we went on the day, it was, now we went to the cinema and I know a lot of people were gonna say, oh, you shouldn't go to the cinema on the first date, but we were actually watching a film that we went to go see with friends, but we didn't get to actually finish the film because someone started having, having an epileptic attack in the middle of the movie. So that was a whole other thing. Anyway, she invited me to see this film. It was Inside Out 2. And I was so hyped. I got the message from her. Uh, we were at, what was it? I was at like a, a karate anniversary party or something. 40 years of the sensei doing karate or something. I got the message and I literally, I like, was like, yes, boys. My mum was asking me, what was up? I was like, oh my gosh, a girl has asked me on the date. I was so ecstatic. And, you know, I got ready for the date. My, you know, dad dropped me off. Uh, we got ready. And then I met her there. <laughs> And we had a very nice time, right? The conversation was flowing. Uh, she seemed like a really, really nice girl, really caring, really loving. Um, you know, had a lovely dress on, things like that. So she was ticking a lot of boxes for me. Now, because of the success of this first date, we went on a second date and a third date. And it was in these following dates that I realized that she wasn't really the girl for me. She was, how do I put it? kind of like every other modern girl you know she was like a feminist hashtag hashtag girl box you know and for me i'm not that much of a work person you know i respect everyone everyone can live their la la life how they want but i'm not a very politically correct guy shall we say and there was other aspects like she was using, she had TikTok, right? Now I've never downloaded TikTok and never will because I think it's a wretched hive of scam and villainy. And when I mentioned it about her, I actually kind of like snapped her at the bus in a sort of joking way because uh, long story short, we were on the bus after we'd just gone for breakfast. I was feeling a bit tired. So I was like resting like this on the bus and she kept nudging me for, not, for me not to fall asleep. And she started scrolling on her phone and she was showing me all these like, TikToks different is that a spider on the outside yes it is uh show me all these TikToks just like I don't mean to sound horrible but brain rock videos of like animals and what have you and she's showing to me and I was just getting fed up of her so I jokingly I did kind of snap her but I jokingly said I don't want to see your shitty TikToks <laughs> and I said it in that tone and she looked at me then she looked away she seemed kind of like upset that I'd like said that to her and she mentioned me later on that she was siphoning tears, which obviously wasn't a good thing on my part. And I think the main mistake that I made in these dates and stuff is that I didn't really show my like true self. I didn't really, you know, we talked about like boundaries and things. I told her that, you know, I don't really like girls who go to clubs and things. And she, she wasn't about that. She was a very modest kind of girl, but she had these bad habits like, you know, waking up really late or going on TikToks and things. And I asked her one time if, oh, she wanted to come to the gym with me. And she said, oh, I'd never go to the gym because she was too insecure. And it was just things like that that were just, you know, deal breaking. But I didn't reveal that to her initially. And the way that things were set up, because we were quite, you know, we had a lot of things in common. We put too much pressure on ourselves initially. We sort of acted like it was, you know, we were bound to get together. We were, you know, definitely going to be in a relationship. And so when I made the tough decision, it was extremely difficult to call things off with her. It absolutely broke her heart. And I didn't do it in necessarily the best way. I sort of, I did it in kind of a cruel way because we were messing each other on Instagram, sending all these cute emojis and things. And that was another thing on my part. I was sending all these cute emojis just because she was sending me them. And I was having these thoughts, you know, my mind was so conflictive of, oh, do I want to really read this girl? And I'm not sure. Da, da, da. Eventually I made the decision that I was going to not necessarily call things off, but set one boundary. And that boundary was going to be, we weren't going to FaceTime 
you know, until midnight and stuff, because I was waking up the following morning and not wanting to do things, not wanting to go into the gym, feeling like I'd lost so many productive things of, you know, working on my YouTube channel and such. And I wanted to tell her that. Now, before I FaceTimed her to, you know, set this boundary, um, I stopped sending the, the emojis. I kept sending her really like blunt messages and she picked on, up on that. She like said, oh, what have I done? Have I done anything wrong? I said, you haven't done anything. I'll just, I'll let you know tonight. And uh, she'd send me messages like, oh, I'm so excited to call tonight. And I just put, I will call you tonight, which again was a kind of a horrible thing. I wasn't, I didn't want to lead her on though. I didn't want to show her, you know, emotions that I didn't have. And so I FaceTimed her and she appeared to be crying and I was like oh dear this isn't good we talked for a bit you know we talked things out she told her her side I told her my side and essentially we said goodbye to each other I said if I'm not a hundred percent in then I guess I'm out and she said oh that's fair you know we still had a lot of respect for each other it wasn't like a horrible ending of things I'm not going to call it a breakup because we weren't actually together and that was that when I uh, said goodbye to her for the final time. I, you know, ended the FaceTime call, put my phones and I just went like this. I stared at the ceiling. And I think I said, fuck, <laughs> like that. But, um, you know, afterwards I called up my best friend who I'd been talking about this situation prior, told him what happened. And yeah, now the reason why it was so hard on her is because she sort of, I think I created a version of myself that appealed to her rather than me being myself. Like I'm a very sort of goal-driven kind of guy. I have a lot of, I, whilst I do like being with a girl and spending time with her, I'm masculine at heart. I want to be driven on my goals. I don't necessarily want to make her my primary focus. And she wanted me to sort of be available anytime that I could, you know, any free time that I had, I'd call her, you know, that we were, we weren't together all the time. She didn't live near me and, you know, she had a job as well, but she wanted me to just be available all the time. And that wasn't something that I could give her. I couldn't make her happy in that way. And it was very sad to see that I'd sort of like, not lied to her, but not been genuine with her. You know, I didn't, you know, tell her that I want a very feminine girl or, you know, that I didn't want, I don't know how to explain it so hard. I don't want necessarily a girl that's like, I want a girl that takes care of herself. Now, it's not, I'm not saying she didn't take care of herself, but it's just stuff like, you know, not wanting to go to the gym and things like that. It's kind of a deal breaker for me, you know. Physical health is very important to me. And going to the gym is, of course, one of those things. And I thought, oh, maybe we could spend some time together. But it wasn't necessarily the fact that she didn't want to go to the gym. It was the fact that she said, I am never going to the gym. Like, don't knock it till you try it, you know what I mean? At least that's something that I've realized I want in a girl now is that, no matter what we do, you know, like it or not, at least you're willing to give it a go. I'm willing to give it to go if a go. If someone said, oh, do you want to come to this uh, ballerina class for me for a trial session? Sure, will I probably dislike it? Who knows? <laughs> but I'm willing to try anything. And it was the fact that she wasn't willing to try these things, all these bad habits, that I just had to let her go, I'm afraid. And that's the things with life, guys. Sometimes you've got to be cruel to be kind. You've got to, you know, be true to yourself. Even there was pressure from my parents as well. I remember telling my mum and dad what I'd done. My mum was furious at me. You know, she talked to her a few times over the phone, obviously. And she was like, oh my gosh, that's such a horrible thing to do. She was trying to get me to call her back to like apologize. And she said, oh, can't you give it another go? Which was, I was kind of insulted, to be honest. I know this is the first girl that's ever been attracted to me, mum, but come on, there's more fish in the sea. And, you know, I didn't listen to her. Obviously, it was a tough week just thinking, oh, have I made the right decision? Eventually, I got over it and I realized that I just have to be genuine to myself. I have to be true to myself. I can't lead people on. I can't be someone that older people, not older people, other people expect. That leads on to my other thought, which is that's the main regret of a lot of older people, people on their deathbed, is that they lived a life that people expected of them rather than the life that they actually wanted to lead. And that's just the bottom line. You've got to be yourself and you can have companions in your life. You can share your life with others, but ultimately life's a single player game. You've got to look out for number one just because, you know, you might have a girl who's like, all right, you know, I'll keep around. It's comfortable. 
but you can't see yourself marrying her. She isn't the one for you. You don't feel that spark. You've got to be cruel to be kind. It's going to be more horrible when one day you wake up, you're 40 years old and you realize I've wasted my life with a person that didn't deserve it. They didn't deserve me wasting their time and I've completely wasted my time. So hope you've learned something from this, bro. It was a very deep, deep talk we had, but I'm glad you were here to listen to it. Take care, bro.